What's up ladies and gents, my name is Dan and I have a few questions for you. Number one, do you like making money? Number two, do you like making money with very minimal effort? And number three, do you want to retire early? If you answered yes to one, two, or all three of those questions, then this is the place for you. Because in today's video, I'm going to talk about the best index funds to make us the most amount of money possible in the shortest amount of time possible. And because I'm a generous kind of guy, I'm going to talk about the best ones for Americans and Australians to cover as many people as I possibly can without covering the entire world map. So what I'm going to do is break it down into four distinct categories. The first is going to be what I feel are the best passive set and forget buy and hold forever index funds. Then I'm going to go over some high growth, more aggressive index funds. Some of them have gone up more than 400% in just the last five years. Then I'm going to go over some second tier options that I like, but I feel these are less essential, more niche options. And lastly, I'm going to go over the index funds that I actually invest in and that I plan to invest in as well as my investing strategy. In general, index funds are the best and safest way for the average person to get into the stock market and make the highest returns that they can in the shortest time that they can. And and that is by design. The late, great John Bogle wanted the average person to be able to buy high return stocks with very, very low risks and very, very low costs. So he founded a company called Vanguard who started to offer index funds, which allowed people to invest in the best stocks in the world all in one simple product. Bloody genius, bloody legend. All right, let's get into it. First up, my favorite set and forget passive index funds for the long term. And by the way, index funds are a long term strategy. You'd be buying them to hold forever and ever and ever or as long as you possibly can. All right, America, you can kick us off. USA, USA, sorry. Now in the US, you guys are lucky you have access to many, many brokers and I'm not gonna go over the, all of them. That's gonna be way too complicated. So I'm gonna focus on Vanguard, and Fidelity funds. So my favorite three index funds are VU or Finilx to track the S&P 500, VU with a cost of 0.03% and Finilx with no cost. Next is VTI or Fizrox, which is to track the total US stock market, VTI with a cost of 0.04% and Fizrox with, once again, you guessed it, no cost. And lastly, to track the international market is VTIAX from Vanguard, VTX, and Fazilks from Fidelity. But one thing to note is that VTIX has a 0.11% cost and also a minimum spend of $3,000 at a time, whereas Fazilks has none of that. No cost, no minimum. As I'm sure you can get the picture, Fidelity is getting really aggressive, lowering their prices, trying to poach all of Vanguard's customers to make them their own. Very clever approach, very, very sneaky. I am very, very sneaky, sir. In a nutshell, this approach is to cover as much ground as possible, be really well diversified, while also investing in the biggest and best companies in the world. And that's why we're tracking the S&P 500, the total American stock market, and also the international market, which just covers as much ground as we can within three simple funds that take no more than 10 minutes to get started investing in. But something to take note of is that the S&P 500 has historically proven to perform better than the international markets, but we don't know if that's gonna last forever. That could change at any time, so it's best to just cover your bets. However, one of the most famous, if not the most famous investor of all time, one of the wealthiest people on the planet, Warren Buffett, has always suggested to buy an index fund that seeks to track the S&P 500 at the lowest cost you can. And by the way, if you have your own favorite index funds, let me know down below. And if you just wanna ask questions on some that you are interested in, let me know and we'll have a chat about it down below as well. All right, now to the Aussies. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! I really hope you guys said oi, 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 or at least in your head. So for the Aussies, my favorite set and forget index funds follows a very similar strategy to the US. We wanna cover the Australian market, the S&P 500, and the international markets. So VAS seeks to track the ASX 300 the biggest 300 publicly traded companies in Australia, and it has a cost of 0.11%. VGS, which has a cost of 0.18%, and seeks to track the international markets with 70% of its weight in the American market and 30% with other countries around the world, like Japan, the UK, France, Germany, and so many more. And then there's IVV, which has a cost of 0.07%, and that seeks to track the S&P 500 index. So as you can see, VGS and IVV offer Australians great access to the big companies in the world, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, all these sorts of companies. But VGS just has that added bonus of reaching 
more countries and more companies from around the globe, a little bit more diversified. But having said that, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having one or the other, or even both. And if you stick around, I'm actually gonna go over the index funds that I personally invest in, as well as the ones that I am looking to invest in, potentially in the future. All right, let's move on to the next phase, which is the more aggressive, high growth options that I always keep my eyes on. And if you're Australian, I'm so sorry, there really aren't many options. NDQ is the one that I like, but I'm gonna talk about that in my honorable mention. So American, sit tight, this is your category. And just quickly, if you are Australian, you still can invest in these companies. You need to use an international broker, someone like Stake, who gives you access to these companies. But just be aware, there are a lot of costs, fees, exchange rate fees, taxes become a bit more complicated. So you'd really wanna make sure they're worthwhile because a lot of the time, they cost a lot more than they end up being worth. But sit tight, these ones are very interesting. All right, so America, USA, USA, sorry. Again. All right, my favorite aggressive high growth index funds are ARK Invest's five ETFs ARK K, ARK W, ARK Q, ARK G, and ARK F. Now, I really like ARK Invest, and only a few months ago I did a really in depth video on ARK Invest. So if you are interested, definitely check that one out. I'll leave a card over here, and I'll also leave a description or a link in the description box for you to check out, and I highly recommend that you do. So, what ARK do is they have actively managed index funds that track overall markets that they think are going to change the way the world works, and that's disruptive innovation. And they believe there are four categories for this. Next generation internet, autonomous tech and robotics, genomic revolution, and fintech innovation. And the performance of all five of their ETFs has been absolutely bananas, with ARK K, their most popular and broad ETF, going up more than 400% in the five years that it's been around. Now, ARK K, like I said, is their most broad option, and that's just if you want to come along for the ride, but don't want to be too committed to one particular category. Next, they've got ARK W, which focuses on next generation internet, and that has gone up more than 500%, closer to 550% when I'm filming, in just the last five years alone. Next is RQ, which focuses on autonomous technology and robotics, and is up more than 80% since its inception this year in February alone. Next is ArcG, which focuses on genomic revolution and is up over 117% since February this year as well. And lastly, they have ArcF, which focuses on fintech innovation and is up more than 120% since its inception in April. As I said, super high growth, really exciting. And the reality of these ETFs is that they're most likely going to take off in five or 10 years to come when all of these technologies start to really hit the forefront and make real progress changing the way the world works. And that is a very exciting prospect. All right, next up, we've got my second tier favorites, the ones that I think are not quite as essential. And then we're gonna go over my actual investments, the ones that I like and the ones that I'm looking to invest in. And I'll touch on my strategy as well. Okay, so these next few are still great index funds. They're just a little bit more niche. And if you're looking to be very broad, keep it really simple, you probably don't need to dabble in these ones, but they are good options to know about. So for Australia, I like NDQ because that takes a more more aggressive stance into the tech companies of America, more than IVV and VGS does. So for example, as it stands today, here are the top 10 holdings for each of those ETFs to give you an idea of their coverage. As you can see, NDQ puts a lot of its weight into the big tech companies of the world, 33% of their holdings being Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon, and it's heavily dominated by tech overall. And that's proven to be a very good thing in recent years, as those companies have been doing extremely well. And for the Americans, my second tier options are IJR and IJH. IJR seeks to track the small cap companies of America and IJH seeks to track the mid cap companies of America. Now, as I've said, these are my second tier options. They're not essential, especially if you're investing in VU or VTI already, or both of them, because that covers the entire market and is far more broad. And really simple if you only want to invest in one or two or even three different index funds for simplicity's sake. All right, last up is my own investments, the index funds I like, also the ones I'm looking to invest in in the future. And I'll briefly go over my investing strategy as well. So basically, I can keep it really, really simple. At the moment, 75% of my portfolio goes towards VAS, the Australian Stock Exchange, and 25% goes towards VGS, the international exchange. So for an American comparison, that would be 75% in VTI and 25% in Fazilx. Now, the reason I invest in those two indexes is because I strongly believe in Australia and I strongly believe in the world and America because VGS covers America and the rest of the world. So I get amazing coverage and a really diversified portfolio with just 
two stock purchases. Now my plan for the future is to actually add a couple of index funds to the mix, which is IVV to track the S&P 500 and also NDQ to be more aggressively positioned in the tech stocks of America. I just think there's a lot of potential there. Even though I've missed a lot of the ride of NDQ, those big companies, I still think they're gonna be the biggest companies for a long, long time. So I'm comfortable investing in them. And that's in the not too distant future for me. And my strategy for investing is also very simple. I worked out over the long term, how much do I save every two weeks and every month? And I take as much of my savings as I can and put that into the stock market because the more money is in the stock market, the more returns I'm gonna get and the more that is gonna compound. And that is my strategy to make the most money in the fastest time possible. All right, guys, I hope I gave you a massive variety, covered as much ground as I possibly could today. If you have other ones that you want me to talk about or that you want me to know about, let me know down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, I'm Dan and you've been Dansplained. See ya!